Hi, my name's Lou Marshall. I'm a research fellow and a PhD student, and I'm based at the Bartlett School of Architecture, the UCL Urban Lab, and the Geography Department at UCL, where I research gender, sexuality, and city. I'm committed to producing participatory and collaborative research that has the potential to positively impact the communities that I work with. And this has involved various kinds of collaborations, including with other academics, artists, activists, venue operators, LGBTQ organisations, borough councils, and the Greater London Authority, amongst others. As part of this, I've co-produced publicly accessible publications, as well as participating in and producing public events and contributing to exhibitions. Doing research with LGBTQ communities demands recognising our plurality and the impact of intersecting impressions upon many of us, which have very real consequences regarding things like employment, housing, social isolation and street harassment, for example, all of which are important urban issues. I hope this manifesto resonates with people working in various capacities to shape London's social and material fabric. The same urban forces impact people, communities and spaces differently and policy and practice must respond to this. My research with Ben Campkin shows that LGBTQ venues in London have been more vulnerable than other kinds of nightlife spaces that are similarly threatened by the impacts of long-term neoliberal processes of urban change that have been driving redevelopment, regeneration and gentrification. And this speaks to wider questions of uneven access to spaces, resources and mobilities experienced by Londoners. And these inequalities are undoubtedly compounded by COVID-19 and must be urgently addressed through urban policy and practice. Listen, act in solidarity, practice collaboratively and prioritise people over profit. Urban practitioners need to reach beyond our immediate professional networks to connect with and support people and communities whose lives and needs are unfamiliar to us. This is vital in enabling us to question assumptions, identify our blind spots and incorporate this knowledge into our practice. Ignoring other people's realities doesn't mean that they don't exist or that they aren't important, it just means that you refuse to see them. Approaching our practice with a spirit of openness and solidarity in this way might seem idealistic, but for me it's actually the only option. Erasing people with a narrow view can have really serious consequences. When Ben Campkin and I surveyed LGBTQ plus people in London about our nightlife spaces, we asked respondents uh, their gender identity using an empty box. Now looking at this chart, if we think about the way that we offer public amenities within London, for example, gender segregated toilets without other options, we see how ideas about sexuality and gender are built into the urban environment and have historically and continue to exclude many queer people and trans people. Architecture, the built environment, urban planning and policy is complicit and sometimes inadvertently, in producing inequalities and constructing barriers to participating in public life. Our work as urban practitioners can and should aim to make London more equitable and accessible for all Londoners. Thanks.